where I want to take you back to the time that I was in Galilee a few weeks ago, walking by the Sea of Galilee and walking up onto the Mount of Beatitudes. As I walked up that steep hill and looked out over the Sea of Galilee, what better thing to do than to meditate upon the Sermon on the Mount, the words that Jesus actually spoke in that place. So today for contemplative prayer, I share with you a reading of the Sermon on the Mount, which I recorded three weeks ago in Galilee and on that mountain. God bless all of you. Here by the Sea of Galilee, on this lake, I realize that the most miraculous drama of God's love is still taking place here and now in our own lives, down here among us. God is with us now. God is with each one of you now, today, this very morning. God's love is now. I believe Jesus is still speaking. He is still walking on water, calling to us across the lake. If only we can hear him. If only we can see and stay with him and listen to his invitation, come and have breakfast with me. Visiting Galilee made me realize that we are all still coming home. Coming home to the place where Jesus is alive, where Jesus walked. When we open ourselves to the grace of God, it's like we have come home. We don't need to go on hurting. We can carry God's peace within us like a pure gift. In Galilee I swam each morning, like swimming in baptismal water. You know when you float, you have to float very still. If you thrash around or you panic, you will drown. You just have to be still and feel the water holding you, holding the water as you float with open hands, looking up into the vastness of the sky. To walk on water, you must do the same. Look towards Jesus. Tread the water very gently with your feet. Keep trusting. If you start sinking in your life, then take hold of Jesus by the hand. This Sea of Galilee is an amphitheater of grace, but everywhere is God's amphitheater. Recognize God's amphitheater where you are this morning. Recognize God's peace, God's call into the resurrection. You see, eternity is already here.
Christ is already present with us. If only we open our eyes and see. If only we can breathe in his peace. The Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak. And he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will have mercy shown them. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons and daughters of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in the kingdom of heaven. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its tastiness, how can it be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but must be thrown and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel, but on the lampstand and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. I leave Galilee behind and decide I must climb the Mount of Beatitudes. I'm walking slowly and it's the heat of the day. Walking stick in one hand and Bible in the other and my phone to film this for all of you. I set off up into nature. I can hear the buzz of crickets and the singing of birds. I've brought no water with me and it's very hot and I wonder if I'll dehydrate. It's a very steep climb. You can hear me panting, but I take it slowly. Every few minutes I stop and turn around and look across at Galilee and read a bit more of that sermon, trying to make sense of it for my life. They are still the most exciting words I've ever read and challenging me those beatitudes, still unfolding, still revealing, still saying to me that I must have the courage to let go, have the courage to trust. The poorer you are, the more you will make room. The more you mourn, the more your heart will be broken open to receive God's love. 
And the more you hunger, the more you will be filled. The more your soul expands with mercy and compassion, the more you will find yourself flooded with the mercy of God's grace. Have the courage to embrace purity. It's so much beautiful, that it's so much more beautiful than all that tempts us away. Embody the gifts of the resurrection. Carry peace in your heart. Christ's peace. Peace today, even at the very centre of your storms. I don't rush, I feel the stones, I feel the heat. I balance in the space between the potholes and along the edges of the furrows and turn and turn again to see the sea. I am breathless, completely alone and yet not alone at all. This whole place breathes, sweats, whispers Christ's presence. And the call to turn and look out into the crucible of creation and recognize his living presence, the presence of the one who crossed those waters and silenced the storm and called you two up the mountain to be with him. Do you love me? He asks. Do you really love me? And feed my sheep. Do you really love me? Then don't be afraid. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard what it was said in those ancient times. You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, if you are angry with your brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to the court. With him or your accuser, they hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have laid, paid the last penny. You have heard what it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, turn it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for the whole of your body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. 
and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard what it was said in ancient times. You shall not swear falsely, but carry out your vows you have made to the Lord. But what I say to you is this, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. You have heard what is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer, but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile with them. Give to everyone who begs from you and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But what I say to you is this, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. When we walk attentively, we don't stumble. 
I'll never forget that climbing to the top of the Mount of Beatitudes, my Bible flapping in the wind, sweating, reading a little bit, reading a little bit more. The path banked with rocks and grasses and blue thistles. Each time I stop trying to make sense of what Christ is saying, the pages of my Bible flapping in the wind. And then I go back, back down to the Sea of Galilee, that calm of things forgiven, where Jesus called us to stay with him and experience the silence of eternity. What I tell you is this, what I tell you is this, the only way, Christ simply asking us to give our lives. And yet a call which is so abundantly life-giving. Such a song is not a negation, but it is a song of the fullness of God's unconditional love, his spaciousness, the spaciousness of that love for you. It's not something narrowing and confining. It's like climbing a mountain. It's like reaching the summit and seeing the incarnation. Or it's like coming back to the Sea of Galilee and realizing that Christ through his grace has washed you clean and filled you with the living water of his love, that you too can be infused with Jesus. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for they have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in heaven, who sees in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one.
For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume them and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The eye is the lamp to the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you are to eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor they reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. They grow, they neither toil nor they spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his splendor, was not attired as one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is to alive and today is thrown into the oven... Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your own eye, while the log is in your own eye, you hypocrite? First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before the swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock, 
and the door will be open unto you. Is there anyone among you who will give your child a stone when he asks for bread? Or if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask for them? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow grate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only one who does the will of my Father in heaven on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Everyone who then hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like the man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine but does not hear them is like the foolish man who built upon the sand. The rain came and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one with authority, and not as their scribes. Well, we've reached the end of our contemplative prayer. 
I hope you've enjoyed being with us. It's been different today as I've taken you back to Galilee and climbing the Mount of Beatitudes and hearing those Beatitudes and the words of the Sermon on the Mount, words that we are called to live with all the days of our life as Christ opens them up for us and makes them come true through the spirit of our own lives. But let's now end with a word of prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. My sisters, my brothers, my brothers, my sisters, may the Lord bless you now and forever. Amen. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity interpreted by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strains and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Amen. <laughs>